This video is intended to provide an introduction to heat pump selection and systems design using current state-of-the-art cold climate air source heat pumps for single-family homes. It's intended to supplement rather than replace industry training, including manufacturers educational programs, union and VOTEC schooling, and on-the-job training with a seasoned HVAC contractor and technician. Our main presenter is Paul Meyerdirk. Paul is a registered professional engineer in the state of New Jersey, a certified co-generation professional, and a certified energy manager. Paul holds green professional certificates in mechanical, electrical, and plumbing. Paul was the director of facilities at Rutgers University for 25 years and was a consultant to the New York State Energy Research Development Authority, or NYSERDA. Paul is a trainer in the mechanical industry on best practices and high-performance systems. The goal of this training is to provide the groundwork for understanding the following. Variable capacity air source heat pump operation and how it's different from previous heat pumps. How to perform heating and cooling load calculations for a home. Capacity, sizing, and equipment selection methods. Site-specific considerations for designing ducted and ductless thermal delivery systems. Control strategies. And lastly, recommended best practices, including lessons learned. The lessons in this presentation are grouped into six parts, starting with the basic principles of heat pumps, moving on to using load calculations. Part three is system sizing and specification. System design options and considerations are covered in part four. Part five is thermostats and controls. And finally, part six is recommended practices and design examples. Part one deals with the basic principles of heat pump technology and how it's applied to home heating and cooling. The learning objectives for this part are understanding the basic operation of a heat pump, learning what defines a cold climate air source heat pump, and understanding the advantages of variable capacity. Hi, I'm Paul Meyerdirk, and welcome to part one of cold climate air source heat pump sizing and design training. Home heating and cooling technology has vastly improved over the last five years. Current state-of-the-art cold climate air source heat pumps are now capable of being the sole source of heating for homes in cold climates. The so-called cold climate zone in the United States is the area roughly bounded by Washington, D.C. and Portland, Maine on the East Coast, and Fresno, California and Seattle, Washington on the West Coast, and everything in between. So let's take a look at what is a cold climate air source heat pump. Unlike other heating systems, the heat pump does not create heat. It's not burning fuel to create heat. A cold climate air source heat pump can absorb heat from sub-zero outside air, transport the heat via a circulating refrigerant, and then release the heat inside the home to maintain thermal comfort. It uses a vapor compression cycle, the same cycle as a refrigerator, freezer, or air conditioner, except that the refrigerant flow is in the opposite direction from those three types of cooling devices. Unlike traditional air conditioners, the heat pump is capable of switching the direction of the refrigerant flow, enabling it to heat the home with heat contained in the cold outside air and transfer that heat from the outside to inside during the heating season. Through the use of a refrigerant reversing valve, the mode of the operation of the unit can also be changed to function as an air conditioner and provide cooling during the summer and shoulder months. The cold climate air source heat pump provides both heating and cooling for the home all year from one thermal piece of apparatus, thereby obviating the need for on-site combustion equipment used for space heating. This picture shows water that is being moved from one place to another. A cold climate air source heat pump moves heat rather than water from one place to another. Heat contained in the cold outside air is absorbed in the refrigerant and concentrated in the refrigerant by changing its state, a so-called phase change. The refrigerant is piped into the house and the embedded concentrated heat is released into the air inside the house 
as it undergoes another phase change that brings the refrigerant back to its original state. The coal climate air source heat pump does not burn fossil fuels on site to generate heat for the home. The energy bars shown here represent the approximate seasonal efficiency of a coal climate air source heat pump in the coal climate zone. The electrical input energy used by the heat pump itself is provided by the local utility company. It should be noted that the heat value of the electricity while in the heating mode is almost entirely added to the heat absorbed from the outside air. Thus, the parasitic load from the heat pump is essentially zero. Unless the electricity to power the heat pump comes from a renewable source, there is a CO2 emissions component from the electrical power production, but taken as a whole, the heat pump produces 90% less CO2 when compared to a conventional natural gas fired furnace. How do cold climate air source heat pumps work? They work through the use of what is known as the vapor compression cycle, combined with advanced refrigerants, variable speed drives on the compressor and fans, algorithm driven control system. Although heat pumps of the past also utilize the vapor compression cycle, they do not include these additional features that provide greater efficiency and cold weather operation without the addition of supplemental heat. The cold climate air source heat pump is able to toggle between heating and cooling mode simply by the flip of a switch. The term heat pump is generally used to refer to this type of equipment being operated in the heating mode. The term has grown to mean equipment that can be operated in both the heating or cooling mode since heat is being pumped in both cases, just in opposite directions. Cold climate heat pumps are a subset of variable flow refrigerant or refrigerant capacity, a variable capacity heat pumps, but are specifically designed to operate in colder parts of the country and provide sufficient heat capacity to meet the home's thermal load demands without supplemental heat. The cold climate air source heat pump is considered to be products listed on the US EPA's Energy Star website list of qualified cold climate air source heat pumps. Cold climate heat pumps have multiple operating speeds that fine tune its operation to match heating and cooling loads to outdoor ambient conditions. The enhanced capabilities of the cold climate air source heat pump are what allows the improved heating performance on the coldest days and extends its cooling performance on the hottest days. The solid state controls use algorithms to adjust the speed of the compressor and fans and the position of the electronic expansion valve to minimize ramping up or down of the unit to meet load conditions. The vapor compression cycle is schematically depicted on this slide in the heating mode. The indoor heat exchanger, condenser, is a finned coil with circulating refrigerant in its tubes that transfers heat from the refrigerant to the air inside the house. The refrigerant enters the condenser as a vapor or a gas and exits as a liquid. The air inside the house is blown over the fin tubes of the condenser coil, thereby cooling the refrigerant and causing the air to be heated. The concentrated heat within the refrigerant, latent heat, is transferred to the inside air as the refrigerant changes phase from a gas to a liquid. The liquid then flows to the metering device, the electronic expansion valve, and forms a refrigerant backstop between the condenser and the evaporator in order to maintain the high pressure in the section of the refrigerant circuit between the compressor discharge and the outlet of the condenser. The expansion valve receives a microprocess signal that tells it how much to open or close to allow just enough refrigerant to enter the evaporator to meet the thermal loads of the house. After the refrigerant passes through the expansion valve, the pressure of the refrigerant is lowered, reducing its boiling point below the outside air temperature. The refrigerant then enters the evaporator 
so named because its job is to evaporate or boil the refrigerant using cold outside air. It can do this because the boiling point of the refrigerant at this point in the cycle is lower than the outside air temperature. The refrigerant leaves the evaporator as a gas and enters the compressor where its pressure is increased, causing a corresponding temperature increase per the gas laws and a decrease in the temperature at which the refrigerant can be condensed. The refrigerant again enters the condenser and the cycle is repeated. So to recap the vapor compression cycle in the heating mode, starting at the compressor, which is point one here, the refrigerant flows from the compressor in the vapor phase to the condenser. And in the condenser, inside air from the home is blown across the condenser finned coil, which cools the refrigerant gas into a liquid, changes phase. And the liquid refrigerant then is moved over here to point three, where it stops up against the electronic expansion valve and is metered out in small quantities that match the load to the evaporator, which is located outside the house. And at the evaporator, cold outside air actually boils the refrigerant. And then that refrigerant is gasified and goes back to the inlet of the compressor, at which point the cycle repeats itself. The compressor, the expansion valve, the condenser fan, and the evaporator fan work in concert together as directed by an advanced control system. The control system uses programmable logic and machine learning, a form of artificial intelligence, to learn the optimal speeds for the compressor and fans and position of the expansion valve based on varying load conditions. The result is a finely tuned unit that provides high total thermal efficiency and the capacity to operate without supplemental heat in extremely cold weather, as well as significantly greater efficiency when used in the cooling mode. Old school heat pumps, on the other hand, have constant speed compressors and fans and some may even have a capillary tube rather than expansion valve for its metering device. These older type of heat pumps are primarily controlled by sensing the refrigerant pressure and then turning the compressor on and off based on a fixed set pressure, resulting in operation that crudely approximates thermal loads of the home. Non-variable control heat pumps have only one or two speeds. This means slower recovery, often overshooting the thermostat signal. The result is inefficient operation, analogous to driving an automobile and slamming on the brakes and then slamming on the gas pedal. New technology heat pumps, because of their variable capacity and their ability to closely load follow, maintain operation closely approximating a steady state. They improve comfort by providing a more constant home temperature and reduced air velocities. To recap this slide, taking a closer look, we'll see that in a, co a conventional heat pump follows the load in this manner, which is an exaggerated on-off cycle, which is inefficient because the compressor is, is turning on and it ramps up to meet the load. And then once it hits its set point, it begins to drop off until it hits the dead band set temperature. And then it cycles back up again. But with variable refrigerant flow and modulating components in the heat pump, we're able to more closely match the load and reduce the span of the on off process, which creates more of a steady state and increases the comfort in the home for the reasons that we said. It's, uh, the temperature is more constant in the house and also the air velocities within the home are reducing draftiness and noise. How does modulation help capacity? The ability of the heat pump to finally control and adjust the operation of its component elements, including advanced, quote, slide, unquote, refrigerants, enable it to meet thermal loads at sub-zero temperatures.
There are several manufacturers of cold climate heat pumps, each with slightly different components, features, and performance attributes. So looking at this diagram a little more closely, what we see is that traditional heat pumps are unable to really meet the load at low temperatures without some sort of supplemental heat. And typically this is around 35 degrees Fahrenheit for traditional heat pumps. That's about as low as they go without having some sort of um, supplemental heat, usually in the form of an electrical resistance heater inside the heat pump. But with the cold climate heat pumps, they require less or in most cases, depending on uh, whether or not it's super, super cold, but in most cases, they require no supplemental heat, making it far more efficient than a traditional heat pump. So let's summarize what we've learned in part one. We learned that heat pumps move heat rather than create it. They don't burn fuel to create heat. The heat pump uses refrigerant and the vapor compression cycle to absorb heat from the outside air and transports that heat inside to maintain thermal comfort. We learned that cold climate air source heat pumps can absorb heat from the outside air even at sub-freezing temperatures, because even then, there's still some heat in the air made available by the advanced refrigerants and algorithm-driven controls of these heat pumps. And we saw that variable capacity allows the heat pump's output to match the heating or cooling load automatically, rather than only being able to cycle on or off to maintain temperature.